Good night, train. Miami, Florida. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is your host, Frank George, and you're listening to a special edition of the Night Train Show. Our usual show, All Aboard the Night Train, you will find on the Night trainshow.com again that is the night train show.com we have just recently created the special edition night train show because once in a while we have to get some information out there in a timely manner now what we are discussing this time around and it happens to be march 16th 2018 happens to be a friday but on thursday which was the 15th we were able to catch up with Karen Smith and King Cornelius III of um, the Sovereign State of Good Hope. Now, I know that you may not have heard of the Sovereign State of Good Hope, Good Hope, but the fact is is that the citizenry, part of which was a part of what we call South Africa, decided that uh, being members of South Africa, the country, was not to their benefit, so they seceded. That secession uh, took place on 24 September 2017. There's even a video of it you can find on YouTube. And uh, I do believe that um, uh, you may be able to find uh, that information on their website, SovereignStateOfGoodHope.org. Again, SovereignStateOfGoodHope.org. I hope I have that right. We were able, as I said, to catch up with Karen Smith of Radio Free Africa, and Radio Free South Africa, and uh, King Cornelius III, he is the ruler of the sovereign state of Good Hope. They have made efforts to interface with the United Nations and to bring an awareness of this new nation that has been created, and it is an evolving situation. So far, the mainstream media has not reacted to that in any way. We do hear that the African National Congress and the other uh, black Marxist party, the EFF, um, of which it appears Mr. Julius Malema is the head, are um, going to combine and they will be passing and making changes to the constitution of South Africa so that they can expropriate, which means to take away uh, lands and property without compensation. That means that anybody that is a a citizen in South Africa can have um, their properties taken from them just because the government says so, and no money, no money will be given them whatsoever. That, of course, uh, sets the stage for anyone who does not want to go along with that to want to secede. That secession has already taken place, and what follows is... Uh, the interview that we were able to do with, uh, again, Karen Smith of Radio Free South Africa and with uh, King Cornelius III, who courageously both went to the United Nations to present documents and such. The rest, you will hear from them. And, of course, uh, we would wish for you to forward this program everywhere and anywhere you can to bring the kind of awareness to this situation that it actually does merit. The mainstream media is not reporting on the creation of this new country, which actually does exist. So we are hoping that Fox News and the other news channels will quickly cover this situation as events unfold in South Africa, which seem to indicate that there may be some kind of violence, some kind of um, a terrible situation amounting to a civil war. Anyways, um, let us proceed with our program. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, many have been interested in the situation evolving in the country of South Africa. That country is currently run by the African National Congress, and uh, there's a smaller group known as the EFF. Both are communists, and there has been a declaration that properties will be expropriated without payment. The Constitution is going to be changed in order to have that be part of what is law of the country. And we believe that this will happen in um, August, I think it is. However, what is not known 
is that on September 24, 2017, a declaration of secession was made by King Cornelius III. He is the, the king of the sovereign state of Good Hope, a new country, and we have with us King Cornelius III. Uh, king, how are you today? I'm well, thank you very much. Thank you. I am doing very well, sir. My understanding is that you are currently in New York and that you have gone to the United Nations for what purpose? Yes, I'm in New York. I've gone to the United Nations to complete the last part of the, the secession to inform the United Nations that we are now a sovereign state of Budo, breaking away from South Africa. Um, we have the demarcated the land. We have 15 million people. Um, we have a shadow government in place. We've done the public declaration of secession. And we are nearly finished to make our country a legal, official country. This is why I'm in New York. I understand. How were you received by the United Nations? That's quite fascinating, Frank. I was... It's the first time in their life that somebody's come to ask for observer status um, from a sovereign country that they have no knowledge of. And I think the reason why they have no knowledge is because South Africa has blocked us, barred all journalists from speaking and, and telling about the sovereign state of good in South Africa. All television companies would, would stop from doing it. All radio stations would stop from doing it. All newspaper articles would stop from doing it. So South Africans have been hearing about this by word of mouth and social media. Um, America and Britain and Portugal and other countries have fortunately received um, my comments by radio and some of them by television. So they are aware of the sovereign state of Buddha, but South Africa is not. Or maybe they had been ignoring us. So coming to the United Nations and telling them about the sovereign state of Buddha, they told me, but you need to go to South African Council of Gender. I said, I do not belong in South Africa. I belong in the sovereign state of Kudo. And I, as the ruler of the country, have come to tell you that we apply for observer status because we want to have multilateral and bilateral arrangements with various other countries throughout the whole world and also to the United Nations. And for the first time, I'm sure they say, that they went uh, the, 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 um, not being able to answer me. And then in the same breath, I went to the African Union Observer Mission for, at the, for the United Nations. And they also didn't know how to handle it. Because no country in the world has ever applied, or no king has ever applied for observer status for a new country that nobody knows about. So we have fulfilled nearly all the requirements to make the sovereign state of Buddha a legal official country. Well, I must say that you have done everything possible to notify all parties of the existence of this new nation of which you are the uh, the ruling king. And uh, there is some traction because of the problems in South Africa with the with a government there, which is completely communist and now inclined to take from people what they have earned through without uh, giving them any monies for it. We have heard that on Fox News, um, Tucker Carlson has mentioned uh, some of what's going on in the country. Uh, he does well, absolutely. He does not uh, reference to the sovereign state of good hope. I suspect he doesn't know, but I suspect that he will know in short time what's happening with that. Ann Coulter, the uh, very well-known political pundit, has uh, spoken of the plight of uh, South Africaners under this system. And um, Ann Corcoran, who runs a very popular blog called Refugee Resettlement Watch, has weighed in on the situation also. So... Uh, it's beginning to take form. It's beginning to take shape outside of the realm of the mainstream media, which is non-cooperative. And I think that they do this on purpose because I recall when you, um, uh, King, 
um, were part of a video where the uh, ceremony, I, I believe, was held in South Africa on September 24, 2017, for the Declaration of Secession. So even that is on video, and and it seems it seems somewhat uh, impossible that the mainstream media would not pick this up, and yet I think it's an effort on purpose not to recognize this. What what are your thoughts? On the day of the secession, 24 September at the castle, when they arrived, a drone appeared above. And 12 minutes into the secession, into the declaration of secession, all the internet was cut off. But fortunately, we had a video camera which couldn't be affected by the internet. So everything was recorded. So government, the government knows about what is happening. they wishing and praying that it could go away and disappear and just vanish. The land expropriation without compensation is my people are suffering from it for hundred already in the Western Cape, in, in the provinces of Kudov. Because land just a few weeks ago, five bus loads of Runguni people or black people from the Eastern Cape drove over the border, came into the West the Western Cape and tried to expropriate land from the Khoisan people. And seven of my people were killed. Um, and then only the government stepped in and brought in the, the, the armed forces to stop these people from taking land. Last week, um, while I'm in, in America, I was informed that the people that has been bombarded by the, by the black people trying to take the land for nothing, and eventually now called the gangsters in and said, it's going to help us to, to stop the people from taking our land. So now they're going to turn, and, and I don't hope they're going to call it a gang war, because it's not. It's expropriation, expropriation of land without compensation. And the world don't know how evil it is. The world don't know how petrified the people are. They have worked all their lives to, to own what they have, to hand it down to the children, and now it's just being taken away because somebody else wants it. It's evil. Now, mm. our government has not recognized the Khoi people since we've become a democracy. We believe we're going to be recognized as people. 1997, when the United Nations sanctioned the Khoi and the Bushmen as First Nation indigenous people, we were excited. They invited us to be part of the drafting of a white paper to include us in the House of Indigenous Leaders. We were excited. In 2003, when the white paper became an act, we were excited and they told us that it's not for you, it's only for the black people. Now, the world don't believe and don't understand what is white and black. We, the Khoi people and the colored people, are not black. So in 2007, when the United Nations passed the Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous People, I went to government and said, now you need to listen. You signed the declaration with 143 other countries throughout the whole world. And they told me that there's no law in South Africa that says you people, say international law, can it be applied? We have be become the invisible people in the land of ancestors, all four million of us. And after seeing what they're doing and how they're going about it, how the white people are being murdered and killed and the women being gutted and children being put in the ovens and burnt alive and husbands being killed, how people standing on street corners and begging when the mineral wealth of the country is valued at 36 trillion rand, and people are stealing money and giving nothing back to the poor. It is ungodly. And for that reason, I sat down with my council and said, come, let us invite the minority groups to be part of us. Let us all live at peacefully in this country of Sabah Buddha, where everybody has the right to self-determination. And the whole world is... is Wanting this right to self determination, but because of politics, they can't have it. The sovereign state of Buddha has the right to self determination. So the land grabbing is going to continue, but for a short while only. When I come back to South Africa, and once I've sat down with my council and we've decided that we need to inform government that we are now a legal official country, the land grabbing in the sovereign state of Buddha will cease. So, but I still feel sorry for those in South Africa. They still have to live through that and experience 
the, 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 the danger and the fear. Because the Soviet said, you know, we have something that we've planned that of, of uh, Professor Nagin, my, my legal advisor, has, has educated me and said, we need to have capital, human capital investment. And when you have human capital investment, you have human intelligence, and you have human ability. All those things invested in, in a country, the country will prosper. If you look at South Africa, we have 27% of the population is unemployed. 50% of that is youth. Human intelligence that, and human investment is gone. The country cannot go. So now when they're expropriating lands and farms from the people, what is going to happen to the food food security in the country? I, I, I feel sorry for South Africa, but I'm okay. We're okay. We're living in the suburbs of the Buddha. It's not going to happen there. I hope that answers your question, Indeed it does, and I, I do want to wish you a great deal of luck in, in your endeavor. Uh, the breakdown for your country, you have 15 million people. I think you said 4 million are, are Khoi Khoi or Khoi San. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, That's correct. 3 million, I believe, would be white South Africaners. Am I correct with that estimate? Yeah, done about there, yes. Okay, so what is the rest of the breakup, racial breakup, makeup? I'm sorry. What is the what is the rest of it? We have the the, the Eurocana and the colored people, um, and the Eurocana. Um, if we look at people that is like, for example, a colored person getting married to a white person from okay. Europe, um, or a coy person getting married to a Euro European. For a black person getting married to European, their children are called Eurocanners. So the makeup of that is the rest of the population. And they are welcome because they were born there. When you see, when you born, the land doesn't belong to us. We belong to the land and you cannot separate us from the land. So if you're born out of the land, you belong on the land. So all those that is entitled to be there will get a new ID document. It says, I am a citizen of the Soviet city of Budo, and like Americans, they will place their allegiance to the country. Well, That's and interesting, isn't it, Zach? You know, King Cornelius, I think you have uh, done a great work here. I want to thank you for having made yourself available for this interview. I know you're tired. You've been doing so much, and I think that the um, sovereign state of good hope is lucky to have a man like yourself managing the affairs of having that country recognized. Uh, we know that the Sovereign State of Good Hope actually does exist as a country now with its own borders, with a population of 15 million. And I believe what you had said to me when we spoke recently was that now the only thing left is what to procure legal status for that country. Is that what you said? No, all I need to do is inform everybody that needs to be informed that we are official and legal country. And then we inform the South African government, and then we sit down and talk about the way forward. So we can have a peaceful secession and a peaceful break away from South Africa. And that is our prayer. But I need to thank you, Frank, for offering up your time and your expertise to listen to me and to spread the word to the rest of America of what is happening in South Africa and what is happening in the South Africa of Kudo. And that very soon we will invite you and you can book a plane ticket and say, I'm going to Kudo in a new country. And that sounds interesting. I'm going to Kudo. So in my mother tongue, I, I, I often say this, in my mother tongue we have three words and we're the only country, only language in the world that has three words to say thank you. So in my mother tongue I would say gun gun, which means thanks. And I would say kayayos, which means big thank you. But when I say kamako, I say thank you with deep gratitude. So to you, Frank, and to Karen, and to everybody supporting the services of the group, kamako for everything you're doing. 
Thank you, Keith Cornelius, and uh, may God guide you and protect you in your endeavor. It is most important because you represent the the freedom and the well-being of the the people of the sovereign state of Good Hope. I want to wish you well on your journey, and if you would please turn me over to Karen Smith, who I I believe she's your media representative for America. Am I correct, sir? That's correct, Frank. Yes, she is, Alderman, sir. Thank you, King Cornelius. Good evening, Frank. Good evening, Karen Smith. I hear that you're very tired, and uh, this tiredness comes after innumerable years of work on behalf of the uh, people of uh, South Africa and your endeavor for freedom and for sanity for those people. How are you feeling today after having gone to the United Nations with uh, King Cornelius III, the the uh, ruling king of the sovereign state of Good Hope, a new nation established and um, uh, one which is uh, striving to make itself known to the rest of the world. How are you feeling, Karen? Frank, I'm, I'm not really able to tell you whether it's a high or a low, you know. It, it, it's been craziness uh, for the last seven years of my life. It's been absolutely crazy with this. And I, I, I really can't tell you how I feel. It hasn't sunk in yet. Um, the team said as well, there's not a word for the emotions that we're feeling. It's just kind of a laugh or cry or just go to sleep. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I can't describe it. Um, trepidation a little and, and great happiness at the same time. It's, it's difficult to explain. Well, I, I must say that in going to the United Nations, the two of you have completed part of the journey that is necessary in order to um, have the status of, of uh, the sovereign state of good hope recognized by the rest of the world. And what we must emphasize here, as uh, good King Cornelius III mentioned, was that um, uh, South Africa and the sovereign state of good hope will be two totally different countries, two totally different countries. The laws that are being passed by the African National Congress and the EFF, which I believe seeks to join the, the ANC to make a larger group, even though EFF is very small, are, are uh, being crafted to take properties away from individuals who have worked for them this is what communism does, and this is how the country of South Africa is functioning now. So the sovereign state of good hope would be harbor from those laws for the good people of South Africa, correct? Absolutely. Um, as the king said, if you're born on, the, on that land, you belong to that land. And we don't mean just the land of the sovereign state of good hope. We mean South African land. But he is also very... Um, uh, he says a thing very often. You are welcome in the sovereign state of good hope if you are willing to add value. So if your value is education uh, or if you're a pipefitter or a plumber or a whatever, as long as you or an artist or a writer, as long as you add value to the country, you are welcome. But um, political infighting and those kind of things are not acceptable in that country. Unkindness to your fellow man is not acceptable. So, you know, it sounds like a utopia. And now I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking on behalf of the king. I'm speaking for myself. If even 50% of what the king would like to achieve in this sovereign state of good hope comes to fruition, they have created a paradise on earth for people. And also a hope for the rest of the world, which is being inundated by hordes of people who do not belong in that country and being overrun uh, with savage um, people. And they need hope as well. So good hope will be good hope for, and a beacon of light for everybody in the world. Well, that's a wonderful concept. Now, you as the uh, media representative in the United States for King Cornelius III in the Sovereign State of Good Hope, I, I, I've i caught a little bit of what you've been doing out there. I did listen to you on Blackbird Nine's uh, Breakfast Club, I believe it was. I also know from speaking with you, and by the way, I want to thank you. You have always been the person who has guided me 
in terms of understanding what has happened in South Africa, and that has been huge. It has been huge for me, and equally huge to see that now you are part of establishing this sovereign state of good hope, a new country. You have reached out to Fox News, and what happened with that? Um, we, we we sent an email to Fox News because I was really, really happy that Tucker Carlson spoke about um, the land grabs in South Africa. So it was my hope that he would be open, or Fox News would be open to discussing the other things that are happening in South Africa. So we reached out to them, I sent them an email, and this morning we went there. And at the desk I spoke to the people, the, the king was in, in his royal garb with his carotte and his stick, and uh, we explained who he was and what he was doing in New York, and that we would like to speak to somebody who would be interested in this story. And they basically gave me another email address and told me to go away. So we did, and I sent them another email with the documents of suspicion, etc. And I'm really hoping that these gatekeepers to the reporters who do not know a big story when they see it, I'm hoping that we can bypass them and get to somebody who will see the magnitude of what we have to tell them and maybe take notice. I, I I am not familiar with the process of getting something to Fox News, but say, for example, you've got a number of, of uh, uh, talk show hosts there. You have Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram. Uh, you even have uh, Mark Levin now has a Sunday show on there. And, of course, Tucker Carlson and uh, so many others are on there. Pete Cavuto, or Neil Cavuto, I'm sorry. Do you not send an email to each one of those persons, or is it only handled on an individual one email address situation? Uh, yeah, you have to you have to go through the gatekeepers. And having been a corporate gatekeeper for a, a corporate boss for many many years, I understand that these people are just doing their job. Their job is to weed out the Looney Tunes and and let, let these reporters and journalists and and show people deal with their own work, but, you know, they should also have the intelligence to see that this is a, an earth-shattering occasion, and maybe let you speak to somebody a little above them, but unfortunately that didn't happen, so I'm still reaching out, I'm still reaching out to them in the hope that before the king leaves here, um, we can get somebody to come and speak to him. Okay. Well, you know, um, you're a very hard worker and you're very dedicated. You've done it for a long time. I don't know how you have lasted this long because it is such difficult work and frequently it is met with a great deal of frustration and failure. And speaking with you in these last few days, I, I've noticed the emotional up and down and uh, I, I feel very comfortable in saying to you that I, I think you have succeeded. I don't think you have failed. There's still a stretch to go. And, of course, you did not get the exact results that you wanted when you went to the United Nations, but I think you got the results that logically um, would be yielded, understanding what the United Nations is. And it's the same for the mainstream media, but I think you're going to be gaining traction very quickly, so I would urge you not to quit. Maybe just take a deep breath, sit back for a little bit, and go back at it. I think you're on to a rather large success coming in a few weeks or a few months. But it is imperative well, Frank, that you not give up. Those are very encouraging words. Thank you for that. Because right now, I think a glass of Coke, a cigarette, and my bed are the things that I need most in this world. And tomorrow morning will look different. Oh, oh I, absolutely. And I, I really mean what I'm saying. I'm not saying that just to comfort you. I'm, I'm being as uh, technically precise as I can be. I figure that I am outside of the fray. I am outside of the cloud of emotions that has fallen over yourself and King Cornelius III. You're both to be congratulated for, for what you have done. And no, you have not failed. I think you have succeeded. You have done something that is necessary. It's part of the larger program in order to get this, uh, this country recognized and completely established. So... You know, don't give up. 
take a little breather and keep at it. And I think that things will be going in the direction that you want them to. And I, I know that's not an easy thing for you to accept. You've been dealing, fighting things much larger than yourself for such a long time. But you have been so very courageous doing your radio program, talking to people, trying to explain what's happening. And a lot of what I hear out there, uh, you're not mentioned, but I know that it comes from you. So the story is out there and that story is about to grow larger. Don't you think that logically that's what's going to be happening? Well, that's what I pray for, Frank, is that that is going to be the result. Because if, if I never thought in my lifetime I would be part of such a big thing. I, I, I am such a small person in the middle of such a huge undertaking. And the king feels the same way. But he is also, uh, it, it's bigger than all of us. But how many people can say in their lifetime that they were part of forging a new country? and of saving 16 million people's lives. And it just doesn't happen. And I don't see myself as some hero with statues put up to me, but um, if we can achieve this, I will go to my grave one happy person. I think you will go to your grave one happy person, and hopefully many, many, many years from now. I, I, I think it is logical that as the story in South Africa grows about the expropriation of lands and non-payment and the spread of communism, as that story grows, it is only logical that also notice will be taken of and mentioned that a new country was founded and that it has 15 million people, it has its own borders, it has its own constitutions, um, uh, you know that it is recognized by a number of countries. I think the king said 140 or 144, I'm not sure. And so, you know, one thing will go hand in hand with the other. And so it is logical to, to conclude that the, the important thing here being that it will be mentioned that there is a new country, the sovereign state of good hope, and what its status is what its relationship is with the country of South Africa from which it will have seceded. I think it's coming, Karen. It's just a matter of staying the course. Uh, what are you going to be doing in the next few days? Well, um, we have a couple of final things that we have to do tomorrow that, that are essential to the schools. And then I think we're all going to sit back and possibly even have a beer. And I can't remember when I last <laughs> took a drink. But I think we do one. <laughs> oh, yes, you are due one, without without any doubt. Uh, before we say goodbye, I know that you folks have a website, and perhaps this is a place that we can refer to as things develop with the, um, with, with the new uh, sovereign uh, state of good hope. What, what website is it? Where does one find it? Sovereignstateofgoodhope.org Okay, you know, that yeah, is... They also have a Sovereign State of Good Hope Facebook page. Okay, there's a Facebook page also. Okay, is there anything else? Um, huh. I don't think so. I don't think so, Frank. Um, we, I, I'm unable really to think straight right now. It's a, it's a sense of relief and a sense of... Okay, where to now? You know, until we strategize on that, I'm kind of at a loose end. <laughs> yes, well, you've accomplished much, you've done much, and you've worked very hard. Now, what about your own show? I don't know whether you're currently doing uh, Radio Free South Africa or whether you have suspended um, that for I a while. Have, I have a stand-in for me at the moment um, because I've been very, very dedicated to what we're doing right here. But yes, Radio Free South Africa is still going. My website is kind of a little couple of 10 days or more behind because uh, I haven't had time to update it but my website is radiofreesouthafrica.com and if anybody would like to donate to my travel expenses there is a button on there <laughs> for <laughs> donations Oh, yes, and please do donate uh, what Karen has done um, a lot of it has come out of her own pocket it has been difficult, and I do believe that this is a worthy cause because this will affect the life of at least 15 million in this new country that has been founded. 
And uh, you talk about something worthwhile. This is most definitely it. So, folks, let us do donate. And again, where does that find that? Where does one find that donate button? RadioFreeSouthAfrica.com. Very good. Karen Smith, thank you so much. May God bless you and protect you uh, while you go about this uh, most worthwhile endeavor. We will touch bases with you again. Final words from you, please. Uh, I would just like people to please just keep on spreading the word. Every one person that tells another person who tells another person makes more people in the world aware of this. And that is our biggest task is breaking through the media and government silence on this and get the word out that the country exists and is a beacon of good hope for everybody in this world. Absolutely, folks. Let's do that. Let's do it on Facebook. Let's do it on, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Gab, any any uh, social media platform that's uh, out there. Let us cooperate with this uh, most worthwhile endeavor and let's do what we can. Karen Smith, thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you, Frank.